set down on the Belmont steps that has the little wall, the brick wall there, and you can sit on top of the wall. So I sat there on, on the side, and I just read my Bible. I opened my Bible, and I'm thinking, Lord, if he's here, then you just bring him to me because I don't know how to find him. And so I'm reading my Bible. Monday tells me after that he was sitting on the steps across the way from me, worshiping with a group of guys. This was after he was inside the meeting, and the meeting had ended, and he went on stage, guys, and screamed my name. Okay, he was screaming my name when I had walked out to my car. He was desperately looking for me. He was on the stage going, Jennifer! Jennifer! You know, 17-ish. That's awesome, Nicole. And so he's screaming my name, but I'm not in there, so I didn't answer. I'd gone outside. So he's across the steps now. He's outside worshiping with a set of guys yes Sandy and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit says stop look up look across the steps there she is you know Monday hears from the Lord he's always heard from the Lord really clearly he knew my name from talking on the phone you'll have to go back and watch the replay Suzanne if you missed it but he we talked on the phone and we knew each other's name from that when we talked on the phone at Mary's house you might have missed that clue I mean that little tidbit so he comes over, and I'm just sitting there reading my Bible, and he goes, Jennifer? And I look up, and he said when I looked up that his heart just jumped, and he got so nervous because I was so beautiful that he stuttered, and he really did, guys. He stuttered, and he said, I'm a, I'm a, a Mundy. <laughs> it was so cute. And so there we were. We had finally met face to face. Yet we met voice to voice first, and we went to eat with a friend of his to keep it, uh, to keep it, uh, what would you say, appropriate, so that we weren't on a date and we just met each other. So we took a friend of his with us across the street to San Antonio Taco Company, downtown Nashville. We ordered food and we talked, and he said the whole time we're talking, he's kicking his friend under the table. <laughs> And like being all excited because he couldn't believe how beautiful I was. You'll have to have him tell this part, but I'm just repeating what he said. And so, guys, every night we talked on the phone for like four hours. We would get no sleep. I think I would sleep like three or four hours before I have to get up and go to work. We were just so, so, so. This is where I want to get to how do you know if it's the one? Because I want to tell you how we met. And then I wanted to encourage some people that are still waiting for the one. Because we would talk on the phone. And guys, the first time in my life since I was started walking with the Lord, a drunkenness of the Holy Spirit, a heavy weighty glory like we had never experienced, not him or I, to that day, came on us every time that we talked on the phone together. Like literally so heavy that I would have to lay on the floor and just praise God and worship God and just, we, we were in awe of the Lord together. And we'd sit there on the phone going, what's going on? Why is God doing this? Why is he, what is he saying? Why is, why is his presence so heavy like this on us? This was in the first week, guys. We weren't even like, you know, we were just getting to know each other. We weren't saying, hey, let's, we're it, you know, like, let's get married. But guys, it only took one more week. Here's the crazy part of the story. He asked me to marry him after two weeks of the day we met. Two weeks later, he asked me to marry him. <laughs> and her parents were like, are you guys crazy? You just met two weeks ago. You need to get to know each other. You have to make sure it's the one. So this is where I'm getting to my point. How do you know it's the one? We told them what, what they didn't understand is how drunk in the Holy Ghost we had been. How, how the Lord had given me the vision of the young man holding me in a bride's gown before he called me to go get that apartment at Mary's. What they didn't know is that I was praying in the Holy Ghost, asking God for confirmation. He gave me the vision of Monday. It was Monday. I knew later that it was Monday, guys, because I remember what the man looked like, and I'd never met him before, but it was him. So crazy. And at the time, he had had his hair was buzzed off like a military crew cut kind of, kind of look, so it wasn't curly then. I mean, it was curly if he'd grew it out, but he, he shaved it off. So it was a short buzz cut. The same guy I saw in the vision, my first vision I ever had. God will show you and lead you. If we're really, really, really 
allow ourselves to be led of the Holy Spirit and really count on Him that He's going to be faithful and He's going to show us the right one, He will. And from the first week that we met and we got so full of the Holy Spirit on the phone together, uh, every every night, almost every night, I would begin to have dreams about being together with Mundy and Him giving me a wedding ring and him proposing to me. I dreamed it all before it happened within like three days of meeting him. The third day after meeting him, God gave me a dream that night that Monday was handing me a ring. And I was like, Lord, why am I dreaming about him marrying me already? Is this me or is this you? You know, you go through all that. Is this me or is this you? But no, it was the Lord. And so prophetic even that I had a strange dream one time that I couldn't figure out, which which I knew later what it meant, and I'll explain it to you guys. I dreamed that Mundy had given me the ring, and then I'd given it back to him, and then he gave it back to me, which made no sense. My engagement ring right here. This one right there with the diamonds. So I dreamed that he proposed to me, gave me the ring, I put it on, and then I took it off, and I gave it back to him, and then he took it and gave it back to me. And I said, Lord, what does that mean? Is, does that mean I'm going to say no? Does that? I don't understand this at all. I'm confused. Well, this is what happened. After he had proposed to me with his mother's ring, uh, two weeks after the day we met, it needed to be re refitted. It needed to be resized because the band had worn down from his mom. This was his mom's diamonds, guys. She wore these diamonds 25 years. It needed to get resized. Her gold band was so thin that it was going to break if we didn't get it re refitted and, you know, re, um, re, whatever you call it, redone. The diamonds had to get reset, reset. Is that the word I'm looking for? <laughs> and put in a new ring. So I had to hand it back to him after a week so that he could take it to the ring shop, get it refixed, and then guess what? He brought it back and got on his knees and put it back on my finger, just like my dream. So it's crazy that the Lord will show us riddles like that just to, just to show us how much he is with us. And there's more dreams that he gave me and just confirmation after confirmation. That's right, Sandy. It's so sweet. It's so beautiful. So if you've not met the one, if you have not, I always tell people this story. I wasn't even looking for the one. In fact, I was praying, God, don't send me the one right now. But God doesn't. He doesn't change his timing and his purpose and his plans according to what we think is the right time and purpose and plan. And that goes for anything you're called to do, any destiny. Whatever the timing and the purpose is that God has purposed for your life, it will happen at the right time. The one that is, is meant for you, you will know it too. Like, you will know it. You know the scripture that says, uh, those that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. And also the other one that says, my spirit, my spirit bears witness with the Holy Spirit that I'm a child of God, right? So the Holy Spirit inside of us will bear witness and tell us when we meet the right one. And he did. The first time I hugged Monday that first night at Belmont Church and we said goodbye to each other after we ate at San Antonio Taco Company, we were saying goodbye. We hugged each other. And this sweet presence just flooded me and flooded my spirit. And him too. And we didn't say this at the time. We did later, of course, after our relationship matured. And and we both said, did you feel that when we hugged each other? It was amazing. Yeah, we did. We married within four months, actually. <laughs> Let me get to that, too. Uh, we felt a confirmation of the Holy Spirit when we hugged each other. A feeling I'd never felt when I'd hugged any other man or boy that I had dated before in my life and I started dating at the age of 15 guys and dated a lot of guys and was with a lot of guys and no no one the first time I met them had ever given me such a deep knowing and feeling of there is something about this guy and I knew that he was either going to be my best friend or my husband but what's great is he is both he is my best friend and he's my husband, and I'm going to cry because I love him. But I'm going to hold back the crying because <laughs> i got to tell you that the day we met was May 8th, May 8th, 2001. And we didn't even mean to do this, but we scheduled our, our wedding on September 8th, 2001. And then I looked back after we had scheduled the date and realized, oh, my gosh, we met May 8th, Monday. 
Do you know what that means? Four months. And what does the Bible say, guys? Who knows it? Who knows it? Four months and then the... Who knows? I'm going to wait and see who knows it. Four months and then the... Who knows? Dun, 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 dun. Does anybody know it? Nobody knows the scripture? <laughs> okay, we're going to have to do more Bible school on here, guys. Harvest. There you go. <laughs> That's okay, Sandy. Four months and then the harvest, guys. God even gave us the date so that he could remind us of that scripture and say, this is your harvest. After all the broken relationships that I had, after all the broken relationships that Monday has, guys, God will heal. He will heal your broken soul from everyone that's wounded you. And the beauty of having the completed work and the destiny that he has for you and their complete love for you will heal your broken soul. Well, the first year we were married, I would just cry and cry and cry, guys, because I... I was so, so broken, so, so 